So today, we are going to have a look at the entire life of Angstrom Levi from Invincible Comics. So, Angstrom of a different dimension sees Invincible flying over a city that has suffered a lot of destruction while people run away. Over his head, the giant Times Square screen has an image of him that is giving instructions. The recording explains that even though people might be upset that Invincible and Omni-Man have taken control of the planet, they have actually done it to help out civilization and that their rule will improve the world. Invincible then explains that cooperation is essential, so any person offering resistance will be terminated on site. Angstrom Levi heads to a hidden base to meet up with Robot and the Immortal. They are leading the resistance against Invincible and Omni-Man. However, Angstrom was followed and Invincible and Omni-Man came crashing through the roof. Omni-Man quickly kills the Immortal while Invincible destroys Robot. They approach Angstrom but before they can kill him, a portal opens up behind him and another Angstrom Levi pulls him through into a different dimension. So it was the main Angstrom Levi who used his portal creation powers to save an alternate version of himself from Invincible and Omni-Man. So he takes his alternate self to a dock while the Guardians of the Globe handle an alien invasion. He reveals to his alternate self that there are many other versions of him. Next, he freed the Mauler twins from their imprisonment and take the duo to his lab. He asks the two to build him a machine that will allow him to get the knowledge of his alternate version's home dimensions. The Maulers accept but say they need more equipment. After the Mauler twins complete the project, Angstrom places the mind transfer device on his head and starts the process. But soon, Invincible arrives on the scene and believes that something bad is happening. Angstrom uses his powers to summon several Maulers from other dimensions to keep Invincible from halting the process. But soon he notices that the Maulers are attempting to kill Invincible, so he removes the device from his head. This causes a massive explosion and the result causes some Maulers to die. One Mauler survives and finds Angstrom under the fallen debris. He frees him and Angstrom says that he can feel the knowledge of his alternate selves. But soon he realizes that his head is disfigured and he looks like a mutated creature. Due to the accident, Angstrom would also lose some memory of the event. He then leaves for a dimension to get his injury fixed by a race called the Technicians and hopes to get revenge on Invincible after getting treated. Later, using his extra-dimensional knowledge, Angstrom finds out Invincible's identity as Mark Grayson. He goes to Mark's house and captures Mark's mother and brother. He then calls Adam Eve and tells Mark of his family's condition. Mark demands to know who Angstrom Levi is and why he's doing it. Debbie tries to say how she got in contact but Angstrom cuts her off. Angstrom tells Mark how he learned about Viltramite having short tempers and how Mark inherited it from his father. He goes on to tell Mark he learned his identity from other realities he exists in, citing that 40% of them has Mark's identity being public. He points to his head and talks about how Mark caused his deformity and Mark remembers him, calling him that guy. This in turn upsets him and he rants about how Mark ruined the process and how surgeons with the best medicine couldn't fix him. He punches Debbie and Mark rushes towards him. He then transports Mark to a reality where dinosaurs were never extinct and mankind no longer lives. The dinosaurs talk and attempt to eat Mark, but Mark escapes after he goes into Angstrom's portals. He sees Angstrom holding his brother, with Angstrom commenting about how he likes his purple skin. Mark readies himself to attack, believing he will kill his brother. He tosses him in the air and enrages Mark. He then sends him to the Marvel Universe where he attacks Dr. Octopus by accident. Mark apologizes, believing him to be a superhero. Debbie comforts the baby as he is crying while Angstrom taunts her. He opens the portal to see how Mark survived. Mark launches into the room with spider web latched onto him. 
Mark crashes into a mirror and Angstrom threatens to throw Debbie and the baby into a reality where the Earth was hit by a meteor. Mark demands to know why he is doing this and tells Angstrom that he removed the helmet to stop the alternate Marla twins from killing him. Mark then attempts to surrender and Angstrom refuses to accept it. He tells him that he will likely kill his brother and mother anyway and that he will go to the other realities and kill the other Marks. An enraged Mark then rushes towards him and he transports him into an alternate universe. While Angstrom is distracted, Debbie uses the opportunity to attack him with a lamp, though the latter has no effect on him. He then rushes to Debbie and easily breaks her arm, causing her to scream in pain. Meanwhile, Mark is sitting by a fire talking to other characters from The Walking Dead. He would be transported through various realities where he briefly battles Omnipotus and meets Batman from the DC Universe and talks about how he is lazy for calling himself Batman because he's dressed like a bat. He then sees Angstrom put his head out to look for Mark and uses the opportunity to grab him. He sees that Angstrom broke his mother's arm and charges him out of the house. Angstrom then distracts him by telling him that the surgeons enhanced his body as well. Then Angstrom punches him, sending him through multiple realities until they land in a wasteland-like dimension. Mark then punches him off. Angstrom threatens his family and this sets Mark off. Mark pummels Angstrom, blood gushing all over Mark's body. Mark then sees what he has done and panics, making it the first time Mark has ever killed someone. However, it is revealed that Angstrom survived the encounter and had the same extra-dimensional doctors patch him up. After the doctors patch him up, he still has a disfigured face from it. He then had his orb cameras watch Mark's house to prepare himself for an all-out attack on Mark. Angstrom then collected several alternate invincibles, bargaining that they get to expand their empires in exchange for laying waste to Mark's reality. So, months after his apparent death, Angstrom finally enacted his plan into action. He released all alternate invincibles on Earth and ordered them to destroy the planet. So, while the evil invincible would level Earth, Angstrom would command them from behind the scenes. On the third day, eight evil invincibles were killed and only eight have survived. They look on in pleasure after destroying many of the cities including Tokyo, Sydney, Paris and Seattle. Angstrom arrives to the eight alive marks and asks them to bring his reality's mark. They refuse to follow his orders and he strands the previous dimension he was supposedly killed in. Then, Mark, Oliver and Bulletproof find him. Angstrom launches his orbs at the trio and knocks two of them back. Mark crushes an orb after he launches into him. Mark grabs his neck and Oliver insists that Mark kill Angstrom since he has caused all the damage. Mark attempts to kill him but he escapes through a dimensional portal. Before he does, Mark tears his forearm off. So Angstrom returns back and asks the medical team to repair his arm. But they say that Angstrom hasn't fulfilled his promises and they won't work for him now. He asks the technicians to patch him up and get ready for the eight remaining invincibles to fight again. The technicians refuse and state that Angstrom works for them now. So Angstrom would continue plotting against Mark but still orbed the technicians. After fulfilling his part, the technicians release him. Angstrom arrives to a flooded city and sees what's happening. He is then surprised when it is revealed that Invincible is dead. So after learning that the person who he hates the most is already dead, Angstrom decides to live his life peacefully. One day, Angstrom arrives at his house and picks up a newspaper to find out that Mark is very much alive. He sneaks into Mark's house and sees Eve walk through the door. He attempts to suffocate her but Mark arrives. He strands Mark into another dimension and talks with Eve. Angstrom wonders why Eve hasn't used her powers and uses his dimensional knowledge to find out she's pregnant. Eve argues with Angstrom by telling him what Mark had told her. 
Eve stated that Angstrom stopped the process by removing the device, which Angstrom said was a lie. Eve goes on to say that he was responsible for Rex's death, including many other innocent people, and that focusing on revenge is not the way to do things. Eve also cited that his dimensional access powers can be better used for better purposes than revenge. Angstrom has a change of heart and decides to release the two remaining invincibles. Angstrom explains that the process may have made him lose his memory and that he had lost his way. Angstrom goes on to say that Mark is evil in many multiverses and the accident could have mixed up his memories, making him believe that Mark in his dimension is also evil. So, Angstrom apologizes for what he's done. He surrenders and opens a portal for Mark's alternate version. But the alternate dimension's Mark pushes Angstrom into his dimension with him instead. Later, when Mark and Robot arrive to that dimension, it is revealed that Angstrom is alive but is being tortured in order to expand the Viltrum Empire of that dimension. But Robot betrays Mark by emitting a low-pitched pulse. He then kills the alternate reality's Mark and scientists. Afterwards, Angstrom is decapitated by Robot, which erases Mark's chance of returning back to his own reality. So yeah, this is the end of Angstrom Levi's story. But it was revealed at the end of Invincible's story that Levi has a son who is also a supervillain and seeks vengeance on Invincible as he blames him for his father's death. So yeah, that's all for this video and thanks for watching.